Yep, yeah, that's it. Okay. Great. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we can go ahead and call the. Kennedy's here. Oh, oh great. Yeah, we're, we're gonna. We're just stopping. We're we, just stop. We're just stopping to uh, to make sure we had a quorum. We're gonna go through the formal roll call in, the, in a moment. Um, it's 1:30. I'm gonna go ahead and call this 1:32. Uh, call this meeting of the Sacramento Transportation Authority to order. Madam Clerk, if you wouldn't mind reading the uh, meeting announcement statement and, uh, and then taking the formal roll. In compliance with the directives of the county, state, and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, this meeting will be streamed live and will be closed to the public. Please view the meeting at metrocable14live.sacramento.net and at www.sacta.org. Members of the public are encouraged to participate by submitting written comments electronically. Comments submitted in person will be delivered to the Board of Directors by staff. Written comments regarding matters under the jurisdiction of the Board of Directors and not on the posted agenda will be acknowledged by the chairperson at the beginning of the meeting. Public comments will be accepted until the adjournment of the meeting and distributed to the Board of Directors and included in the record. Please submit public comments to board clerk at sacccounty.net. This meeting of the Sacramento Transportation Authority is cable class live on the sec in the Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast con con Consolidated Communications and AT&T U-verse cable systems. The meeting is closed captioned and webcast at sacmetrocabletv.tv. Today's meeting will replay Saturday, April 11th at 2 p.m. and Sunday, April 12th at 2 p.m. on channel 14. I'm going to take roll call now. Um, Supervisor Frost. Gatewood. Here. Geta. Geta. Hansen. Here. Harris. Here. Howell. Here. Hume. Here. Kennedy. Here. Miller. Here. Natoli. Here. Peters. Here. Sandu. Here. Steinberg. Here. Chenier. Here. Cerna. Here. And Swin. Here. You have a quorum. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you now please, uh, if you have a flag nearby, please. Uh, Find it and uh, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, hand over heart, ready pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, for one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. I, I hope uh, everyone's staying safe and healthy out there. Um, our thoughts are, are with uh, all our first responders, um, nurses, doctors, uh, everyone on the front line, our food, food service workers that are providing us uh, with groceries and any takeout meals, uh, folks maybe dining out. And uh, please uh, just uh, stay the course and, and we will get through this. Um, I'm gonna move now to uh, public comments for items not on the agenda and ask Madam Clerk, did we receive any comments that we the clerk did not receive any off agenda comments. Okay. Um, hearing none, then I'm going to move next to item two, the executive director's report. Mr. Kempton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, members, um, got a couple of things I want to pass along to the board. Uh, first, uh, with respect to local partnership program funding, this is a program that uh, benefits uh, counties that have either uh, by a voter approved sales tax uh, uh, or through a uh, voter approved or non voter approved fee program, uh, have implemented fundraising uh, mechanisms uh, in their jurisdictions. Um, and there is uh, uh, $200 million included annually in Senate Bill 1 funding for these programs. And at the uh, March meeting of the California Transportation Commission, uh, the, uh, the uh, commission did adopt guidelines for the uh, 2020 program, which covers three fiscal years, 2021, 2021, 2022, and 22, 23. Um, the, uh, of the $200 million, 20 million is set aside for new measure and fee programs statewide. 
and $180 million a year is divided between a formulaic program and a competitive allocation program. The formulaic distribution is based on revenue production and population, and Sacramento County's share uh, for the, the uh, cycle is $2.93 million for each of the three years included in the cycle. The competitive program will allocate more than $187 million statewide over the three-year period, and the distribution will be determined through a competitive process conducted by the CTC. We're currently looking at a very short time frame for applying for the uh, local partnership program funding. Um, according to the uh, guidelines adopted by the commission in March, uh, applications are due to the CTC by June 12th, 2020. However, we had a, uh, a uh, conference call yesterday with the uh, affected agencies and the commission, and there is consideration for moving that date back. Uh, it may likely be moved back to July 17th, but we are going to continue to operate as if it were June 12th uh, until there is official notice that the deadline has been moved. Um, I have provided an attachment for you in the agenda packet which shows the uh, recipient uh, agencies throughout the state and what they will receive. Uh, and uh, we're looking again at $2.93 million a year uh, for the formulaic program, uh, and that's a three-year cycle. We will have a meeting of our professional advisory group uh, on Tuesday at 9 a.m., and we will be discussing this item along with other items. There are other funding programs for which the Commission has approved guidelines, uh, including the congested corridors uh, program and the trade corridors enhancement program. Um, several candidate projects have been identified for the region. Staff is working with SACOG in this process. Uh, we don't have the same ro role with respect to these particular programs, but we'll be following the development of project applications. Additionally, there's been uh, some discussion of a federal coronavirus relief funding package, a $25 billion package in formula funds to support the nation's mass transit operations, which are suffering pretty significantly from the reduced ridership and fare box uh, losses. Uh, total funding for the SACOG region, uh, according, according to SACOG, will exceed about $140 million, and that's more than twice the amount the region receives in a typical year from the Federal Transit Administration. And while these dollars will not be sufficient to make uh, the agency whole, SACRT is expected to receive uh, nearly $96 million, which will help offset the impacts of that reduced ridership and uh, flagging uh, fare box revenues. Uh, also, uh, after discussions with many of you and hearing from comments that uh, I've received while uh, presenting the expenditure plan to some of the local jurisdictions, uh, and given the severe social and economic impacts resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic, we, uh, I think, all agree that it's paramount that government and the private sector work together to overcome these impacts. And there's certainly significant health and contagion issues being faced, um, and those need to be immediately addressed to the extent possible. But we also need to take into consideration the economic consequences resulting from the virus, and those consequences may be longer term. So looking at the future, the uh, uh, authority has an opportunity to direct program resources to assist in the county's economic recovery, both from the existing program and uh, potentially from the new program if the voters uh, approve the measure uh, in November. The positive effects that investing in transportation infrastructure has on the economy has been demonstrated repeatedly in the past, uh, and a coordinated investment program can have a tremendous impact on putting people back to work and providing improvements to the network to accelerate a return to economic stability. So as I mentioned earlier, members of the authority and others have expressed interest in the benefits that can be achieved through a stimulus package. And so over the next few months, we're going to be uh, developing a specific plan of action to ensure that we can focus uh, resources from both the existing measure coupled with potentially new uh, revenues from uh, the proposed 2020 measure uh, on a robust and effective effort to put to taxpayer dollars to work as quickly as practical, practicable to help get the local economy moving. More to come uh, on that as we develop the plan. And we'll be discussing this item also with the professional advisory group uh, on uh, next Tuesday. Uh, change in the meeting schedule for presentations to the Board of Supervisors and Councils uh, as required under the uh, Public Utilities Code. We had previously uh, had the City of Rancho Cordova listed for uh, April 6th. 
Uh, they uh, have requested that the meeting be moved to April 20th, and we have uh, made that schedule change. Uh, just for your information, results of the meetings to date, we've uh, 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 appeared before the Sacramento City Council and received unanimous approval of the expenditure plan. We've been before the uh, Board of Supervisors and uh, uh, got approval of the expenditure plan on a four to one vote. We've been before the City of Galt and got approval of the expenditure plan on a four to one vote. And we've been before the City of Elk Grove uh, and got uh, uh, approval uh, unanimously uh, last night. We go before the uh, City of Citrus Heights this evening. We'll be at Folsom on the 14th, at Rancho Cordova on the 20th, and at the City of Ialton on uh, April 28th. That completes my report. Okay, great job so far, Will. Um, any questions for Mr. Kempton? Yes, I have a question, Mr. Chair. This is Steve Hansen. Yes, go ahead, go ahead Director Hansen. Uh, uh, Will, are you looking at any refunding for the current bond issuances given the low interest rates in the market right now? Well, we just recently did some refunding, but just so happens that our uh, chief financial officer is here, and uh, let me ask him to respond to your question. Thank you. And while he's coming up, if uh, folks aren't speaking, I'm just uh, ask you to remind you to please put your phones on mute. Thank you. Uh, hi, Director Hansen. This is Tim Jones, Chief Financial Officer. And in response to your question, we did refund the 2009 A and B series bonds in 2014 and 15 when interest rates were uh, historically low. And currently, we are still in a very good position with those refundings and don't have immediate plans to do any more but we continue to uh, connect with our, engage with our uh, financial consultants and we'll make appropriate adjustments as necessary. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions for Mr. Kempton or uh, Mr. Jones? Okay, thank you, Tim. Um, moving next to uh, the consent items. Uh, I'm going to uh, move item six, proposed STA budget for fiscal year 2021. We need to have a, a hearing on that, so I'm going to move that to the separate items uh, category. And I'm going to uh, ask for, uh, first of all, if there's any questions from the board members on the remainder of the consent calendar. If not, I'll move it. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like so, to pull, this is Sue Frost. Yeah. I'd like to pull items eight and nine, please, for oh. questions and comments. Okay. I, uh, nine is a separate item that's a hearing item already. You want to pull eight? Uh, yes. I thought it was, I guess it looks like it's part of consent. So, yes. Uh, nine is not listed under separate yes, it is. Uh, yeah, item yeah. in it my is. packet, but that's yeah. fine. Okay. So if it's not part of consent, yeah, mm. item eight then. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's okay. Um, did I hear someone else wanting to ask a question or? No, I wanted to move consent. Oh, Carry. okay. Second. Okay. Second okay. through from Director Hanson. Okay, I'm gonna hold on to that, Director Howell and Director Hanson. Um, but before we do that, uh, Madam Clerk, are there any um, comments on the consent items? We did not receive any comments on the consent items. Okay, thank you very much. So, with that, we've pulled, uh, we've moved item six and uh, to separate items. Where we pulled item eight for further discussion, and I have a motion from Director Howell and a second from Director Hansen on the remaining consent calendar items three, four, five, uh, and seven. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, we got to do a roll call Aye. vote. Aye. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. We do a roll call vote. Um, Director Frost? Aye. Gatewood? Yep. Geta? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Harris? Aye. Howell? Yes. Hume? Hume? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Miller? Aye. Natoli? Aye. Peters? Aye. Santu? Aye. Steinberg? Aye. Chenier? Aye. And Serna? 
Aye. And Ms. and Director Sam. <laughs> That's okay. Aye. Thank you. And the and the consent matters pass. Okay. Thank you. So now we we will take up uh, item eight. Um, Director Frost. Six. No. We're, item we're eight or six. I, eight. eight. Six is moved to a hearing item. Item eight is still on the consent still on item. Consent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, great. Thank you. I, I ha just had a question regarding the ordinance, and I'm looking at page uh, section 23, the expenditure plan amendments, item number five, which is on page 12. We're not on nine and, yet. But we're on eight. We're you, you wanted to pull approval of memorandum of understanding for 2020 measure a supplemental education and outreach funding mr chairman it appears that uh, director frost has a, a, an, a, an incorrect copy or version of the agenda um, okay and uh, I, the item that she's referring to in director frost that item is part of uh, item nine or that issue is part of item nine so you can take that up under the separate items when we come to item nine, if that's uh, acceptable. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, this was part of the packet and I, I don't think I have the updated. Is it possible to email me an updated, um, just the pa yeah. front page of the agenda? Is that, okay, or yeah. If someone has it, to take a yeah. text. Picture of it. it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Madam, oh, okay. Can we do it there? Can we, can we put that on the yeah, screen? I, I, I'm looking at the agenda. <laughs> can we show that on the screen? Uh, hold, hold on, Director Frost. We're going to. Oh, maybe I can just go online to SPA. Yeah, it's on the SPA website. Okay, so while, while you're okay, doing so that, Director Frost, are, are you okay with moving uh, item eight on the consent then? What is item eight? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, uh, that's I, uh, okay. I, item eight is the approval of memorandum of understanding for 2020 Measure A supplemental education and outreach funding. No, I I also want to pull that. I also want to pull that because that would um, be part of my line of questioning. Okay, so that's the item we're on. What what would you like to discuss? You're talking about. Are you talking? Number eight is the MOU for the campaign. Yes. It's supplemental education outreach. Not a campaign. Yeah. Not a campaign. Not a campaign. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, for, but it's for education uh, and... Um, outreach. Outreach and mailers and so forth. Correct. Yes, thank uh, I'd like to still pull that, please. It, it's uh, pulled. We're, what's your question? What, what would you like to discuss? I I I I want to have. Uh, I guess I want to address that at the same time we address the Measure A um, ordinance. Well, it, it's a Director Frost. It's a separate item. Uh, you, you're free to uh, vote in dissent if if you would like. If on this consent item, but if if you don't have a discussion, I, I will call for a vote. Okay. Um, you can you can go ahead and call for a vote. Okay, I will. I'm um, call. Peters will second. Okay. I'll, so, Chair, I'll I'll move item eight. Okay, that was uh, Director second. Hume. Huh. Second by Howell. All right, that was a motion by, I heard Director Hume, is that correct? Second by Howell. And seconded by Howell? Yes. Okay, for item eight, all those, in, well, <laughs> we're gonna do a roll call. Um, Director Frost? I'm, I'm gonna uh, vote no. Okay. Uh, Gatewood? No. Oh. Geta? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Harris? Aye. Howell? Yes. Hume? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Miller? No. 
Natoli? Aye. Peters? Aye. Santu? No. Steinberg? Aye. Chenier? Aye. Serna? Aye. And Swin? Aye. And the motion passes with directors Frost, Gatewood, Miller, and Sandu voting no. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna uh, move to uh, item six, uh, the proposed SDA budget for fiscal year 2021. Uh, Mr. Jones, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, board. Um, it is my privilege to be bringing to you today the proposed budget for fiscal year 2020, 2021. And it comes at an uncertain time when we are trying to estimate revenues uh, for the coming year. And as you uh, may have had a chance to read already, I've summarized uh, in the staff report and then in greater detail within the letter of transmittal, the letter of transmittal is incorporated in the budget document, a summary of our view of fiscal year 2021 and the question of the day and the difficulty we face um, as a as the authority and uh, the administrators of this program is to determine what is going to happen with our primary revenue source sales tax here in the county of sacramento and what we have done and what we uh, believe is appropriate at this time since we don't know the outcome of the um, pandemic is that we have recently uh, engaged our consultant to develop uh, revenue projections for the program and that was back in February and at that point in time we had three scenarios presented to us the most conservative of which we chose and we all know at this time that those numbers are invalid that those numbers are now overstated but it is too soon for us to determine uh, with any certainty what the revenue stream looks like in the coming year so uh, we have stated in the staff report and within the letter of transmittal uh, that we will come back to the board uh, in several months probably in the august time frame and we will reassess uh, the authority's budget in terms of both revenues and expenditures when we have a better idea of the revenue stream that we expect uh, as a result of the pandemic Part of the reasoning behind that is that we receive revenues two to three months in arrears of the collections of those revenues. And therefore, in August, we will not have a clear picture for the current quarter of our revenue stream and the full impact of a quarter's worth of uh, the um, uh, effect of the COVID. So we promise to come back to you soon uh, with that information. I will highlight a couple of other areas hmm. that I think are uh, <coughs> positive and that is that based on our cash flows our fund balance and the request for the capital program in the coming year regardless of the revenue stream we anticipate that we can fully fund all capital requests for the budget year uh, 2021 the area that will be uh, uh, greatest of uh, greatest impact in terms of outflows or expenditures is going to be the monthly um, percentage allocations that are provided to each of the cities and the county in the expenditure plan. Those will be uh, impacted based on uh, the amount of revenue that we receive. Um, at this time, I would um, like to engage anybody that has questions about the uh, budget and try to answer those for you. Thank you, Tim. Are there any questions for Tim? Chair, this is Steve Miller. Yes, Director Miller, go ahead. Uh, does this uh, budget include the fiscal year 1819 appropriation due Citrus Heights? So, this budget is a reflection of fiscal year 2021 and, or excuse me, 1920 yeah. and 2021. 1819 would be in the budget, but it would be based on just actual. Uh, expenditures so that information is in the budget but it's incorporated for information purposes only and has no direct impact on the budget before you today so I'm trying to understand will we or will we not get paid receive a check for 1819 appropriation that we didn't get 
Yeah, so I, I'm, in terms of our commitment to Citrus Heights during fiscal year 18-19, our commitment was on the monthly, uh, monthly ongoing allocations, and during that fiscal year, we did not have any capital program commitments, and I think maybe that's what you're referring to. Therefore, there were no capital program uh, appropriations, only the ongoing monthly appropriations. Okay, so we're not getting our appropriation then is what you're saying. Yes, yeah, so you received all of your ongoing uh, funding just exactly as the ordinance requires, but there was no request and no contract in place for us to provide funding for the capital program uh, in Citrus Heights, and therefore there was no funding uh, included in our budget for that. D Tim, does that mean- My understanding is that funding, that funding paid interest payments on money that was borrowed the fiscal year before by other entities. So basically you're saying our appropriation paid their principal and interest on their projects, not ours. Are, you wanna clarify? Tim? Let, let, let me step in here, Mr. Chairman, if I can. Yeah. Um, um, Director Miller, to my knowledge, any of the uh, funding that was included in the capital program uh, has been provided to the j local jurisdictions. And so from my perspective, now I wasn't here in 1819, but from my perspective, I think we are consistent with the budgets and the capital program and uh, as, uh, as uh, was indicated by our financial officer, the 2021 budget actually includes meeting all the programming commitments that we have under contract with the, with the recipient agencies through the end of the budget year. So if there's, I, I, I'm, I may be missing something, but to, again, to my knowledge, uh, all of the obligations have been met. And to add to that, I've reviewed all of the contracts that we uh, committed to for the capital program with Citrus Heights, and all of the funding, dollar for dollar, was allocated to Citrus Heights in the timing that we had promised. So Citrus Heights, uh, Mr. Kempton, would have to come forth with an eligible project, and what, what I'm hearing you say is they didn't come forward with an eligible project? I, I don't know what the reasoning was, uh, but uh, again, any contractual obligation we had with any of the jurisdictions uh, has been met, uh, and we are able uh, in this budget to meet those commitments through the end of the budget year. There will be some discussions relative to future payments on the capital program, given the fact that uh, we issued debt early in the program, and it has reduced the amount of capital funding that is available overall for the program. But that's beyond the budget year at this point. I see. Director Miller, do you have any further questions? Uh, no, that's not my understanding of what happened, but uh, I'll, I'll let it go for now. Well, well, Director Miller, let me just say this is uh, you know, this action t t today is is uh, to uh, take a public comment on the budget and to move the item over until May 14th. So you will not be asked to adopt the budget in, until May 14th. I will be in your jurisdiction tonight, as you know, uh, and I will sit down with Ms. Cave so that I can better understand what what the issue is. Uh, and we will take steps to resolve it prior to bringing the budget back in May. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, with that, are there any So then, um, oh. uh, Chair, this is uh, Director Hume. Uh, so, Will, do we need a, a continuance of this item, uh, uh, or? We need yes. to continue it till the May 14th meeting. Yeah, yes, yes, that's the that's the recommend the staff recommendation. But I, I want to get for uh, take a break and go to our clerk to see if there's any uh, comments from any public comments. Still or? have not received any public comments. Okay, I just wanted on to this check item. on that. Go ahead, Director Hume. I'll uh, I'll move to continue the item to a date certain of the May 14th uh, meeting of the SBA. Okay. I'll second it. Motion by Director Hume, seconded by Director Howell to con open the public hearing on the proposed budget and continue the item to May 14th. Uh, please roll call vote. <clears throat> Director Frost? Aye. Gatewood? 
Thorn. Yes. Gitta? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Harris? Aye. Howell? Yes. Hume? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Miller? Aye. Natoli? Aye. He is now joining. Peters? Aye. Santu? Aye. Schneer? Garrett. Aye. Is now exiting. Aye. Steinberg? Steinberg? Cerna? Aye. And Swen? Aye. Thank you. <clears throat> motion carries, I assume. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. The motion carries with um, Member Steinberg um, absent. Uh, okay, uh, moving to item nine, introduction of proposed ordinance to S number STA 20-001 regarding a potential transportation sales tax measure. Mr. Kempton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, members, um, at our last meeting uh, on March 18th, uh, you approved the, uh, tentatively adopted is the correct uh, uh, termination, or uh, term rather, that uh, the uh, transportation expenditure plan, um, and the transportation expenditure plan is now, as we talked about earlier, under, under review by the uh, uh, local uh, uh, agencies. Um, as required uh, under uh, the Public Utilities Code. Um, the next step with respect to the overall uh, ordinance, which includes the expenditure plan as Exhibit A, is to introduce that ordinance uh, and then to bring it back uh, at the next regular meeting for adoption by the board. So the item before you today is the uh, introduction of the proposed ordinance number STA 20-001, which, which will uh, be then brought back to you for adoption uh, at, our, at our next meeting. And so you're going to be asked to uh, introduce the uh, proposed ordinance to waive full reading of the ordinance after the clerk has read the title and then to continue the item to May 14th, 2020. Uh, and uh, that we, where we will ask you to consider adoption of the ordinance. In terms of uh, some of the uh, issues, um, following inclusion of section Roman numeral 1-J, uh, which is the Metropolitan Transportation Plan compliance in the expenditure plan, which again was tentatively adopted last month, um, it, the issue came up about the requirements of this section uh, should be included in the proposed implementing ordinance to ensure that that language is not subject to uh, changes uh, as a result of uh, section 23 of the ordinance which deals with expenditure plan amendments. Uh, so that language is before you today, uh, an insertion of language which would preclude uh, 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 the uh, amendments to uh, the, uh, the item going forward. In addition, there is another, addition, uh, another uh, uh, proposal to add language to section 23 of the ordinance which would reinforce the authority's previously expressed intent to limit the amendment process for the transportation expenditure plan to every 10 years. Those change lo changes are redlined on pages, in 11, excuse me, pages 11 and 12 of the draft ordinance, which is attached to this item. Um, so the authority's uh, tentative adoption of the TEP, again, is followed by a first reading uh, which incorporates uh, of the ordinance, which incorporates the TEP as Exhibit A. Uh, this agenda item is only to introduce the ordinance. Staff is requesting that full reading of the ordinance be waived. An adoption of the ordinance is scheduled for consideration at the May 14th, 2020 meeting, following the, the deliberation of the uh, on the TEP by all city councils and the Board of Supervisors. I have a question. Yep, Director Howell, go ahead. Um, well, what is what is the point of that item five on page 12 in section 23? The point of item five on page 12 of section 23 would be to preclude amendments to the uh, section in the expenditure plan which deals right. with uh, the Metropolitan Transportation Plan compliance. 
translate that into English and with okay. respect to the connector. Um, well, the, the connector would be uh, presumably governed by language in the expenditure plan. Uh, all this language does in, in terms of the differential is it says that the expenditure plan section dealing with the Metropolitan Transportation Plan compliance cannot be amended during the life of the ordinance. Uh, the, uh, the connector uh, project, like other projects, would still be subject to uh, the section one, Roman numeral one J of the expenditure plan. It, it's a consistency statement, Director Howell. So no additional language, okay. no additional commitment other than to say that it, there, we're mirroring, the ordinance is mirroring the expenditure plan. I mean, Mr. Kempton, I, I have a okay. question, I have a process question for you, for, just for folks uh, at home, <laughs> maybe some of all of us here too. Th this isn't an intuitive process, uh, this regional uh, sales tax measure. Could you please, uh, I know what's before, what you just said is before us today, but could you please just outlining the steps that still need to occur and the different, I guess, potential scenarios that, that could take place. This is not a foregone conclusion, uh, but there, there, are also, there are also steps along the way that uh, decision points along the way still. Correct. So you have already tentatively adopted the expenditure plan. The expenditure plan is in final form. It cannot be changed as we go through the Public Utilities Code requirements of presenting and getting the approval of each of the, uh, of, the, of the majority of the cities representing a majority of the incorporated population plus the Board of Supervisors. That, those activities are underway now, as I indicated in an earlier report. Uh, following, uh, presumably, the approval and, the, and the, uh, uh, meeting those requirements of the PUC Code, um, we will come back um, to the board for adoption of the uh, uh, ordinance, provided the ordinance is properly introduced at this meeting uh, with the waiver of the, of the reading and the, uh, and, uh, the uh, continuation until our next meeting. After that, uh, the, the, uh, for the, uh, the uh, initiative to move forward, requires approval of the Board of Supervisors to place the measure on the ballot. That would not occur until the J July timeframe. The deadline for placing an item on the ballot is August 7th. And so those are the steps remaining in the process prior to presenting to the voters where it would require a two-thirds approval of the electorate. Thank you. And okay. by the way, yep. It also requires the ordinance itself at the meeting on the 14th will require a two-thirds vote of this body. Thank you very much. Any questions for Director Kempton? Yeah, Chair sure, yeah, Sun. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, who is that? Sorry. Hanson. Director Hanson? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And there was somebody else after me. Later. Yeah. Oh, please, please mute your phones if you're not talking. I heard Director Hanson. Go ahead, you go first, and then we'll I'll uh, ask for who spoke next. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Will um, uh, I'm prepared to make a motion um, to move the item consistent with the staff recommendation, waiving reading, etc. But, um, Mr. Burke, I'd like to ask you. I don't fully understand the purpose of including the language notwithstanding. If uh, the public utilities code allows something, but we're choosing a different process. It seems like this notwithstanding language is somewhat confusing. Can you explain why it's here and what its effect would be? Sure. Um, when this board tentatively adopted the expenditure plan last month, one of the provisions in the expenditure plan said that the plan can only be amended every 10 years basically. And by saying Which is that consistent with current measure A, right? Sorry, Steve, say that again. Is, is that is the process here that you're describing for amendment consistent with current measure A? 
Current measure A did not, does not clearly, and that's part of the reason for this clarifying language, the existing measure A does not clearly preclude this board from adopting amendments on an annual basis under the circumstances provided for in the Public Utilities Code. That's why I've been seeking a clear statement after there was discussion by this board as to whether or not uh, you'd be able to make annual amendments. After the discussion that this board had on that subject, my understanding is the board reached the conclusion that you didn't want to allow yourself to make those annual amendments and that you would only allow yourself to amend the plan after 10 years. So that language that I added, the notwithstanding, is basically saying, despite the allowance in the utility code, which allows you to make annual adjustments, this board is electing to not do that. That's what the clarification is for. And just to be candid, that language, it's not essential. It's, to me, it was clarifying, but without it, the language still says that you can only amend the plan every 10 years. So to me, it was clarifying. If the board feels like it's more confusing, then we can take it out. It, it's not critical. So, so two follow-up questions. I don't believe we ever voted on the issue of uh, annual versus decennial amendments. Um, at least if we did, I don't recall it or wasn't present. I know that uh, Supervisor Frost raised that issue, but I don't remember anybody else speaking to that specific point. Uh, again, my memory may not serve me, but um, I do find it confusing. And given that state law is what state law is, by restating it there, it sort of, um, to me, added, added a lot of uncertainty because we're choosing a process that is um, the process in the ordinance that the voters would be adopting. So I, I don't, I don't know that it, it actually helps that much. But um, I would love just some record of the board making an official decision, other than just some dicta comments during discussion. Well, there was no specific vote on that issue. <clears throat> the expenditure plan that was presented to the board last month set, stated, and it states that the plan may only quote only be amended pursuant to this 10-year process. And by that language, yeah, okay I construe that, that as restricting your ability to amend it on an annual basis. Maybe this is more technical than it's worth, but I do think the inserted language that you have there is, is confusing. And honestly, I would prefer to see it taken out um, just for that purpose, because we're already laying out the amendment process and the ordinance that will be going to the voters. Um, which will constrain the board. This is Director Soon. What if we just said the expenditure plan shall only be amended by the following process, replace may with shall, and then we remove the, the uh, preface notwithstanding? Would that accomplish the same fine thing? Fine with me. Director Hansen, would that? Yeah, and yeah, that's fine with me. And I think you just saved everybody $100,000 in law school by. Um, by making that recommendation. So if, if <laughs> the, the board is okay with that. Uh, okay, more now. I'm getting older now. Thanks, Susan. Um, <laughs> I would like to make a motion to, to move the ordinance forward with uh, striking that language on page. Um, let me just go back to so specific. I scrolled away. Page 11. Section 23, sorry. page 11. Yep. Uh, the underlying red language to be removed in the word may after expenditure plan be replaced with shall to read the expenditure plan may shall plan shall only be amended and I'll, I'll make the motion that we move forward. Can I ask a follow up question, Mr. Chair? This is Paul yeah, uh, yeah, Dr. Kennedy, go ahead. Okay, um, on that issue, uh, and this is to, to council. Um, if we were to do as is proposed, would it preclude us from following, this is a two part question, would it preclude us from following the language in the PUC 
number one. And two, does the current Measure A allow us to follow the language of the PUC? Yeah, I have interpreted current Measure A as allowing you to make annual amendments. This language that you, well, the language that you adopted last month restricts your ability to do that on, on an annual basis. Okay, then I, I'd like to make a friendly amendment to the maker of the motion and say that we go back to the current language in the current measure. I don't think that uh, we should preclude ourselves from the possibility of future amendments. Uh, the PUC allows us to take into account, as it says, consideration of future unforeseen circumstances. I think uh, the world we're living in today shows us that unforeseen circumstances are foreseeable, uh, and I don't think we should constrict us to that. Okay, I have a, a, a comment from Director Natoli. <clears throat> also, I think Director Frost was, was punched up too, but I just want to say to the friendly amendment, I think then it goes counter to what the expenditure plan specifically calls out. The ordinance doesn't necessarily have to say this, but I think we kind of went over this ground, and certainly the motion can be what the motion is, but uh, with, with the su suggestion that um, uh, Chair Soon made a moment ago, I think it not only clarifies it, but it's consistent with what the expenditure plan. So, is now joining. I'm, I'm just going to say I'm supportive of the language as uh, suggested by the Chair, just with, you know, making that clarifying piece of that, but I mean, the expenditure plan has been sent forth to the entities and that it, it, it precludes the ability to make those amendments, but every 10 years. And so the ordinance ought to reflect that. Whatever we might think about it now, I think we already set this in motion. So that's my view. I agree. Thank you, Director Natoli. Uh, Director Frost, I apologize. Did I, I, I think you were in the queue. Um, that's all right. Um, I, I just will um, say that the expenditure plan is would like to support the existing language that uh, limits our uh, ability to revisit the expenditure plan to every 10 years. I think that's what, you know, I think that <clears throat> what, the, what the people said in the polling was that they wanted to know that the money would go the way they thought it was going to go. And so they wanted some sense of assurity that we were going to make a promise and then deliver on that promise. So I think that was our best effort. And um, uh, as Director Natoli said, um, it's already in motion and it would be um, just better to leave it the way it is. So that's my, that's my position uh, on that. And, and then I further had, a, had another question, if it's okay to go in. I don't know if you're done with that discussion or if you want me to wait with my other question. Uh, it, we're, we're still talking about, I've, uh, I believe, uh, Director Hume. Okay. Did, yeah, thank you, Director Frost. Director Hume? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Will, I'm just curious as to um, at whose behest was uh, paragraph 5 put into section 23? Uh, that request came from a number of parties. Uh, that came from the uh, um, Smart uh, Sack Moves group. Uh, 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 Director Steinberg uh, was interested in uh, uh, those protections. Um, a number of other people that had uh, supported the uh, 1-J amendment for the expenditure plan uh, came forward and asked for that, that protection to be included in the ordinance. Okay, um, uh, there is a typo in the red line. It reads expenditure pan. I, I saw that and was going to, uh, before the vote, uh, uh, indicate that we would make that correction as well. <laughs> okay, and so why are we putting language in there that, that only references one, one provision within the expenditure plan that cannot be amended? Um, I, I will speculate, and maybe maybe uh, Director Steinberg would like to comment on this, but I would speculate that it's because they wanted that item uh, protected from amendment. The, this is uh, Daryl Steinberg. Um, this was the provision that I negotiated um, with some of the members and stakeholders um, month and a half or so, month to month and a half or so ago. And the, the agreement was 
that the STA plan, expenditure plan, would be consistent with the region's unanimously adopted climate plan. And so that's less about <clears throat> expenditure as it is about the policy that throughout the life of the plan, that how, no matter how it changes, that it should be consistent with our climate goals. So it's just it's consistent with what we negotiated uh, in good faith over the course of the last uh, last couple of months, and I am uh, I am prepared, to, as I said earlier, to go all in um, and, and support this ordinance and overall plan uh, when it comes to the ballot and. Um, I think it's uh, it's just consistent with what we did last time. Okay, uh, Director Frost, I want to come back to you. You, you had a, a second comment? Uh, yes, I, I, I'm, uh, my question relates to item number five, as a matter of fact. And the, the question that I have, um, and when I'm looking at this, is referring to item um, section 1j and is it j or is it i and j uh, it's 1j i Both believe I roman numeral 1j okay um so if, if you go to 1j and you go to the last paragraph on page a3 then, in reading this, and I'm taking my phone off. I'm I'm sorry, Doc, Director Frost. We can't hear you, D Director Frost. D Director Frost, we we can't understand you. I think she's just reading the provision. Oh. I still can't find the section. The page number. At first, I want to say that I, you know, one of the beauties of, of doing a local tax measure, and one of the things that the state has encouraged them to do is to be self help. And so, for many of us, uh, a local tax measure is, is an opportunity for us to be able to. Um, get some things done that we haven't been able to get done because the Fed and state over the past decade have basically, the funding has dried up and we don't have money to do just deliver on normal services like overlays and fixing our roads and um, meeting our, um, our part of the requirements for economic development and uh, infrastructure and capital improvement. And so... It seems to me that when we take item five and we D Director Frost are basically D Director Frost creating an ordinance that is giving away our local control of our dollars and it and it's it's causing us to we're basically handing away the purse strings and the money is gonna come back and the money is back. Hey, Director Sue, Frost, Sue, this I, is hard to we can't we can't hear you, Sue. And this is where I get awesome. Director Frost. And the question that I have is, <laughs> is my mic on? <laughs> how do you determine? Because, uh, this is what this does is. Sue, um, is Sue, Sue Frost. This is Don Natoli. We can't understand no, let me just, you. Let, no, hello, can, let me finish. Well, we can't uh, hear we, you. We can't Director hear Frost, you. We, we can't. We cannot hear nearly oh. every word you've said. Can you, you, um, can you hear me now? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Barely. Would you care to, I don't know, is there a way to sum summarize? Or, can you hear me now? Is everybody on mute? Let me ask that first. Is everybody else on mute? Okay. I mean, nobody's answering, so that's good. <laughs> so, Director Frost. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, I think what I'm trying to ask is how do you, how do you determine um, 
how, what is the measure of this? Is, is a project like the Cap- Capital Connector going to be major, measured against whether or not the region is meeting their greenhouse gas goals? Because we've never done that. So does that mean they're not going to get their portion of it? And, and because in that last paragraph on A3, it basically says that if, uh, if the project um, in any way causes or if the region is not, if it causes the region to not meet their their goals, they don't get the money. Well, I'm going to defer to you. It goes director. back to the jurisdiction. It goes back to the jurisdiction to be used at the ju- discretion of the jurisdiction. So, so that that one little short sentence puts the whole ordinance and the whole measure. It takes it completely out of the hands of local government. And it basically, um, we're, we're now competing for our money again. D- Director Kempton, do you, do you want to address this? Well, first of all, the language to which Director Frost is referring in uh, Roman numeral 1J is in the expenditure plan. It's already been approved by the authority, and it cannot be changed. So um, that language is, is al- already in place. Um, and uh, with respect to the specific question, it is very similar to what we see in section I above, which is the federal air quality requirements, which would indicate that projects that are included in the expenditure plan must also satisfy the requirements the, of the uh, uh, federal air, air quality uh, provisions uh, before it can be uh, included uh, in, in, or before it can be funded. Uh, uh, and that's uh, something that has, in, it has uh, existed in uh, the existing measure and, and, uh, and in this measure as well. Slightly different wording, but... But the question, the question what, are, what are they being measured against? Because those projects are already part of a general plan that, and they've gone through an EIR pro- process. And so are you saying that if the region is not meeting their greenhouse gas goals, if they're not in the MPP, they, they don't get their money? I mean, what does that, how, how does that look when it plays out? Where do they go? Do they go to SACOG to get, to get that approval? Who, who, who measures um, that and what are they measured against? Are they measured against an average of the entire region or are they measured against their own specific area? That's kind of another part of the question that I have. Um, the language uh, here is uh, specific, uh, or is not specific, rather, to the uh, to the issue of is this in, as part of the uh, MTP SES plan, or is it via individual projects? Uh, in the case of the federal air quality requirements, those are uh, a con- the conformity is based on the regional plan. Um, and so uh, that, uh, that uh, issue or the question that you're asking is something that will have to be de- uh, determined as this uh, goes forward. But uh, in fact, it does require adherence to the, greenhouse, the state's greenhouse gas emission reduction targets. Uh, and um, it, it, you know, j- just in terms of reading, uh, for any projects not planned or programmed for construction in the adopted MT- NTP, the following requirements will apply. And it says for any projects. And then it talks about the uh, potential for mitigation measures, uh, but it does get to specific uh, if, uh, if, uh, if the impacts are not mitigated to meet the region's then applicable, because that could change, GHG reduction targets, uh, the region and the region cannot meet its greenhouse gas targets. The proceeds would be uh, put uh, to uh, other projects um, uh, that uh, do meet those requirements. And, and Will, would, would all projects... So, so, so essentially what you're saying is it's, it's measured up against the entire region, um, which has never met its greenhouse gas um, targets or its MTP goals um, to date, and we now are uh, launching on a new on new goals that are even harder, which will be very unlikely to reach. So that really means that those parts of those entities that are not in the MTP in, are not probably going to get their um, funding. Well, the process does. That portion. The process does allow for mitigation uh, of those impacts. 
Um, and the MTPSCS is updated every four years. Uh, and um, it's a 20-year plan. Uh, and so if a project that doesn't currently meet those targets, uh, if they can provide uh, a mitigation uh, uh, program to, uh, to uh, uh, re uh, prevent the increase of uh, emissions, then they can proceed. So there is a, there is a, uh, a an, an alternative th uh, than just saying that they have to meet these per capita reduction targets. Hey, Will. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Who did Will, I? This is uh, uh, Vice Mayor Gary Gatewood of Ranch Cordova. So the, yeah. the connector, the, the one that we're, we're talking about, <clears throat> the connector piece, is that in my city? Is that that piece of the 14 miles that you're talking about that aren't going to get funding because we're not going to be able to match whatever the regional uh, goals are? Is that right? That, that we're talking about right now? Wait, that, that's entirely speculative, Director what, what, Gatewood. What, what, go go ahead. question? I, I'm sorry. But is the four, is there 14 miles that are in the that is in the connector that we're talking about right now? Is is that the one we're talking about? Is that the that is it in the MTU? Is that in my city? Is that the 14 Part of miles it. in my city? Portion. Portion. No, a portion of it is okay. that the piece in question uh, that is currently included in the MTP SES for project development only is the piece of the connector between Douglas Road and Bradshaw, and that's the 14 mile section to which I believe you're referring. Okay, so this is are, Darryl Stein. are the, yes, this is Darryl Director Steinberg, Steinberg, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, negotiating with, we negotiated this out largely with Michael Quigley of the Alliance for Jobs. Um, and in approaching this, we were very clear that we were not uh, making a judgment, a negative judgment on the connector. The principle is that any project that isn't currently within the MTP, if it increases GHG emissions, then it has to be mitigated to be consistent with the region's 19% goal. I would point out as well that the region, including the county, uh, I believe Supervisor Crusher, a member of SACOG, voted unanimously for that 19% target was not imposed by the state. It was a regionally uh, adopted goal, and it included every jurisdiction represented on the STA board. Okay, th thank you, uh, Director Steinberg. I think that, yeah. Well, uh, Director yeah. Frost, hold on. I want to. I just want to pause for a second. I, I want. I, I want to take a moment to go to public comment. Uh, I think uh, uh, all of you have a letter that was submitted by SAC Move, so I won't I won't go into uh, that and smart Sacramento <laughs> Metro advocates for rail and transit. Um, Madam Clerk, I have one here that was submitted. Is there any others that were submitted? Okay. Um, so I have a I have a, a public comment uh, from a uh, Miss Glenda Marsh. Uh, I'll just read it directly. I would like to clarify that it was difficult to follow the single word changes in this section under discussion over the last six weeks. The insertion of the word, quote, only was missed by many stakeholders. We would like, quote, notwithstanding, end quote, and, quote, only, end quote, removed. Okay. Um, so I have no further public comments coming in at this time. Uh, at this point, I have... Um, I have a motion uh, on the table from Director Hansen, and I have a friendly amendment from Director Kennedy. I just wanted to take a moment to uh, ask Director Hansen, does he want to entertain that friendly motion or go with your original motion? To be honest, Mr. Chair, I don't, I don't remember what the friendly uh, amendment was, <laughs> but I think given the conversation since then, the simplest and most straightforward would be to take the original motion. Um, and, and since I don't have a second, somebody is also willing to could, could make their own motion. Well, the, the motion's I, I, the motion's I, I, on the I, table, and I'm sorry, did I hear somebody? I thought there was a second. No, no. If, if there's a lack of second, I'd like to make a motion. Well, I, I, I will second that motion. 
Wh what is the motion? The, what? Let's the, clarify. The, mo the, motion, the motion on the table was to adopt staff's recommendation with the amendment to remove, notwithstanding the, the section 180207 of the Public Utilities Code and replace the word may with shall. I'll second that motion. Okay, seconded direct, by Director Peters. And can I'd we like do- i make a substitute motion. <laughs> okay, uh, is that, was that, who, was that Director Kennedy? Yes, or, sir. Okay, sorry, Director Kennedy, go ahead. You wanna make a substitute motion. I thought substitute that- Substitute motion would be, would be to uh, change section I 23 uh, to be consistent with the current language in the current measure A. I'll second the substitute motion. This is Director Cerna. Yeah. I'll withdraw my second. Well, we can. I believe Director Cerna second. And I can withdraw motion. my we motion if that's where we want to go. I don't really, I don't mind. Well, I, I would, if it's okay, I would rather take the vote on the first motion. No, we take the Chair, 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 I would ask for a little uh, clarification yeah. on the substitute motion from Mr. Yeah. Kennedy. I'm not quite sure precisely what is meant. Director Kennedy, would you please clarify the motion? I would like the amendment process to be consistent with the current, the measure A that is currently in place. Therefore, it's inconsistent with the expenditure plan, however. Right. Yeah. But they said, point of, they, they, point they, of clarification. They, they, excuse, excuse me, I have the floor, thank you. The uh, expenditure plan uh, can be uh, slightly modified between now and when it's approved. Remember, we've not approved it. Well, no, the, the expenditure plan has been tentatively adopted and the jurisdictions that have, we, we're, we can't change it. We adopt, actually we adopted it 13 to three, so we can't change it at this point. And personally, I, I would say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna also uh, ask Director Kempton to uh, clarify. I, I believe we also heard from folks that the number one priority uh, was that the expenditure plan in, in, from the polling, that the plan did not, does not change. Director Kempton, it, it, am I recalling that correctly? You are, Mr. Chair, the, uh, one of the higher <clears throat> support items uh, or indication of support for the issue was uh, not having the ability to change the, the plan moving forward. Um, it uh, received, as I recall, 89% uh, uh, support or strong support from the respondents. And secondly, of the, of the original Measure A, has the plan been revised uh, prior to 10 years? No. Okay, so I mean, let's, let's think about what we're talking about. We're trying to anticipate a lot. I mean, it's a, it's a long measure, and I think everyone's done a great job to try and anticipate that. Um, but I, I, I do believe that at this time, I, I think um, we should, you know, for lack of better so terms. So as the maker of the motion, I'll, I'll, I'll be clear. It, it is precisely because of the fact of what Mr. Kempton just said, that this isn't something that has been taken up, you know, uh, without great thought. I mean, it hasn't been instituted, but all I'm saying is to give that option, should there be unforeseen <laughs> circumstances. Uh, this isn't something that I expect the jurisdictions or this board to lightly uh, even take, take uh, advantage of. <clears throat> can I, this is Daryl Steinberg, can I make a comment yeah, here? Yeah, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would say that if I were um, considering Supervisor Kennedy's substitute motion um, as an original order of business, say, months ago, I would have fought for exactly what it is you are asking for, Patrick. But I also feel the, the tension on the board, and... I know that uh, I negotiated for uh, a very significant change that I actually think is fundamental around conformance with the climate plan. There seems to be at least some rough and tentative agreement with that. And so if the chair's wish is that we don't amend, uh, that, that we don't take the substitute motion because it'll cause even uh, 
further uh, fissure among the board, I, I'd be prepared to vote against the substitute motion. And, and that isn't what I would really want in the end, but I think um, we have climate conformity. Uh, the rest of the plan is solid. Um, it can be amended every 10 years in, in the way that uh, currently described. And so I, I kind of like to do whatever we have to do to move forward um, and, and get this vote through. Okay. Chair. Okay. And I, I, will, yeah. I will say to, to, to Director Steinberg that, um, you know, you're being new to this board. You don't recognize that we have fissures all the time. Uh, <laughs> that, sure. that, that being said, I am prepared to withdraw my motion uh, because even okay. without the valued being able to see everybody, I can still count. <laughs> Chair. Yes. Who is that? This is uh, Director Hume. Yes, Director Hume. Uh, I, first, I have a question, and then I, I have maybe a, a path forward for it. Uh, the question is, is if, if we voted up on the expenditure plan, and so that, that language is baked in now, why do we even need paragraph 5 under section 23? I'm going to defer to you, Council, to that. Paragraph 5 under section 23 is so that section uh, sorry, Roman numeral 1J cannot be amended 10 years from now or 20 years from now. That's what it's for. It can't ever be amended. Okay, but then if you go back and you read section 1J, then it, it does not reference which MTP has the 19% per capita GHD reduction. And then as the director, uh, executive director pointed out, it, it calls out the then applicable GHD reduction target. So I think there's nebulous language in IJ that is now being baked in forever and ever, amen, by paragraph five. So yeah, maybe a path forward here so that we don't have to have a withdrawal suit motion or have people voting against motion that they'd like to vote for is since we're simply carrying this item over, is there a way to carry over both versions and then we can see them in print uh, next month? Well, we have to. Well, because can I just say something about um, that MTP provision, Roman numeral one J? Even before today's discussion, and in my conversations with Will, I think we agree that that provision establishes a policy in the expenditure plan, and there's no question that it is going to require the STA board to adopt implementation guidelines because there are there are detailed questions that it presents and that had been, that had been my expectation since that language was um, introduced or presented to this process that yes STA is going to have to do some detail work on that if the measure is ultimately enacted and if the result of that detailed work is problematic, this set paragraph five now has locked us in to something that is, is maybe wordsmith at the 11th hour and doesn't work for a 40 year measure. It's actually not that complicated, go, uh, if I may. Go ahead, Director Steinberg. I've, with, all due, with all due respect, Director Steinberg, you've made your case, I've heard it. I disagree. I don't think this language is necessary or prudent. Uh, Mr. Kempton, you wanted to say something. I, I was just going to say that um, the, the uh, language in Roman numeral 1J sets a policy. I think the policy is, is, is fairly clear. What we talked about uh, between uh, the uh, council and myself was, uh, and by the way, with uh, representatives from the Sacramento Area Council of Governments, is that we would likely need to uh, put in place some implementing guidelines that would not deviate from the policy outlined in this plan, but would further clarify some of the issues related to the wording uh, in section uh, Roman numeral 1J. So I don't think there would be any intent in that process to change the basic policy that's outlined in, uh, in the Metropolitan Transportation Plan compliance requirements, but 
clarifying language to uh, uh, deal with some of the uh, implementation uh, uh, guidelines. It, that is good to hear, but to, to uh, address Councilmember, or excuse me, Director Hume's concerns, could you perhaps articulate how that implementation guidance could be developed and not, so to speak, put us into a box for something we don't know tomorrow? Well, to to the it, it will be a challenge, but to the to the extent that we would be changing policy, as indicated in this uh, uh, transportation plan compliance, uh, we we would have to strive to avoid that. We're just talking about how we would implement implement the policy that's described in Roman numeral 1J. Okay. So, again, I, I'm going to I'm going to ask Director Hansen if you'd be willing to reintroduce your motion. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. And a point of order. Just in, I I heard. Uh, Supervisor Kennedy say he was prepared to withdraw his substitute motion. Can we make sure that he has withdrawn the substitute motion? Sure. Director Kennedy? Have you withdrawn? Have you withdrawn your substitute motion? I'm sorry, I was muted. Oh, go ahead. Did you hear, though? <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> what was the question? The, the, the question was whether or not you, you, you actually withdrew your substitute motion. I, I'm, I'm withdrawing my substitute motion. Okay. And Director I'm, Hansen. I'm withdrawing my second. Okay. Thank you, Director Zerna. <laughs> and Director Hansen, you're reintroducing your original motion? Yes. yes. Thank you. And, and I'll reinstate my second. Okay. And, and Director Peters has reintroduced her second. I will call for a vote, please. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Director Frost? No. Director Gatewood? Director Guetta? Aye. Director Hansen? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. Howell? Yes. Hume? No. Kennedy? Aye. Miller? No. Natoli? Aye. Peters? Aye. Santu? No. Shanir? Aye. Cerna? Aye. Swen? Yes. And um, hey, for Director, Director Gatewood, for Director Gatewood, it's a no. And, and Director Steinberg? Aye. And the motion carries with directors Frost, Gatewood, Hume, Miller, and Sandu voting no. Thank you. Okay, with that, I'm gonna to move to our um, closing item. If there are any comments from any authority members? Actually, I have a yeah. comment. Yeah, Director Howell. Um, I'm just gonna remind um, Director Steinberg that the, the climate stuff are goals, and it kind of goes back to some of what um, Sue Frost said earlier that, you know, up until this this point in time, we've not met the, the guidelines for a, a number of different reasons that don't necessarily even relate to transportation. In my personal opinion, this is with my engineering hat on, a lot of that is problems that are blown here from the Bay Area, literally. Um, and with regard to the whole discussion, because we keep having this conversation, it goes round and round and round. At the end of the day, this is about people that are supportive of the connector and other people that are not supportive of the connector. So for the people that are concerned about making sure that the connector gets built and gets funded to get traffic off of Highway 50, off of 99, and off of I-5, it sounds like maybe that battle needs to go back to SACOG, because that's where it came from in the first place. Just felt like that needed to be said. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Okay. Guys, I just have one comment. Uh, this is uh, uh, Garrett. Um, yeah. I really want to be able to vote for a measure like this right now, but my citizens have 20,000 people that have lost their jobs, and I just 
am feeling heartbroken that I can't help with this, but at this point, Rancho or the representative Rancho can't start voting for a measure that's going to put a half cent sales tax and raise anything on any of my citizens right now. So I'm sorry that we're not going to be able to help with this measure going forward. Okay. Anyone else? Well, I'll chime in then, if that's okay. Uh, uh, Dr. <laughs> um, Kendi. Uh, and I'll, I'll say what I said at the board meeting uh, this week, uh, and that's that, you know, I, I think that right now is the time that you don't walk away from investing in infrastructure and jobs. Right now is the time you look at ways of doing that, similar to the WPA during the Great Depression, the first Great Depression, I'm afraid. Uh, and pumping pumping eight billion to thirty billion dollars when you take into account matching into this community and into this economy is going to pay off dividends far more than a half cent sales tax measure. Okay. I'd like to make a comment, Chair. Um, yes, Director Frost. Sue Frost. Yeah. Uh, I, I just want to I just want to say that um, the economic consequences of the Corona virus are devastating and there are many longtime business owners that are now on the verge of you know they're struggling to keep their head above water and they're anticipating possible bankruptcy and the the tone and the mood uh, right now is going to be for survival uh, i don't think it's the right time to ask for more and i don't think that the voters will vote um for, for more than they already have. They're, right now, they're going to be focusing on survival. And um, that's why I'm, I'm not going to be supporting. Okay. All right. And I it, would just say. You, Director and, Peters, yeah. And it is ultimately up to the voters. Here, here. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Please stay safe and healthy. Meeting adjourned.